Modesky, Martin, and Wood with uh, John Schofield on uh, guitars and little Walter rides again from the album Out Louder. And uh, joining me now is uh, John Modesky, Billy Martin, and Chris Wood from the band. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Welcome back to Toronto. You got your levels all down, Pat? Thank you. Hello. Hello. We are good. Let's start off from uh, my right, uh, listeners left, and uh, please say hello. Hey, it's Billy Martin. How you doing? Chris Wood here. Hello. Hey, it's John Modesky. Well, welcome uh, once again, guys. You were here just a couple of years ago last, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I, I, I want to actually start from the beginning, uh, early 90s, and uh, a name uh, that obviously means a lot to, uh, to you guys, Bob Moses. What's, yeah. uh, what's Bob Moses mean to uh, MMW? Moses, rock along. <laughs> oh, man. Well, he's like, uh, well, he's a mentor of mine. You know, I, I grew up in the city, and um, Moses was, uh, I, I ran into him in the 80s, in the mid 80s, and uh, we became close. Uh, we were in a Brazilian, actually in a Brazilian samba class together, and uh, that's how I was introduced to him. And then he started you know, using me in his, his different um, ensembles and projects. And then uh, when he moved to Boston to teach at New England, New England Conservatory, he started telling me about these uh, amazing musicians up there. And, and uh, over the years, John and Chris, were two of them and uh and i never met them for like about a year or two he would talk about these guys and then uh and then finally i got to meet john up there through moses and then they can carry it from there yeah Mo moses is one of those guys that you you want to have take under your wing because he you know he, he's such an amazing drummer he has so many amazing stories to tell and uh and then he talks you up to fellow musicians you know he's sort of he's an incredible networker kind of person who's like man you got to meet so-and-so and you know so it, that helped us kind of brought us together so uh it's it's been obviously a number of years what do you think uh, has been uh, the reason why the band's been together so long well we're like a family you yeah know? we're like yeah at this point you know we've been so through so much but you know the initial love of music that we share or the respect for each other you know, and the, um, uh, you know, and what comes out of it every time we, you know, we work at it. It's just always a great result. It's very satisfying. Well, with families, though, there, you know, there's some strife and some stress every once in a while. And uh, I guess you've uh, come across that from time to time. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah we've got, we got three different egos here that uh, yes. need to be stroked every once in a while. None of us will stroke them. So. <laughs> Billy, you mentioned uh, the uh, Brazilian scene. You were part of that uh, Brazilian scene uh, for quite some time in New York, were you not? Yeah, definitely. It was, it was a thing. I guess it was really a, a, a movement in, in the 80s in New York. Yeah, I used to play at uh, Sounds of Brazil, SOBs, with a group called Ped du Boy, or Ped du Boy, and, uh, you know, crossed paths and worked with people like Nana Vasconcelos and, you know, those good Pat Metheny and Bill Frizzell and Mike Gibbs, these guys that all loved Brazilian music, and Jocko. Yeah. Pastorius uh, and Moses and all those guys that love that scene. They were in and out of it all the time. And I was always there because I was this young, you know, percussion student, just, you know, always ready to play with anybody. So it was great. And you've also had a chance, Billy, to play with uh, John Laurie's uh, Lounge Lizards, a, uh, a yeah. band that I play often on this, on this program. And uh, someone I actually came to know through a movie called Down by Law. Yeah. Oh, Isn't yeah. That flick? Oh, sure I do. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, he's been in a... In a couple of films uh, with uh, those Jim Jarmusch films. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. great. He's like a cult figure. Chris, uh, you, uh, you've also got some stuff going on with your brother. Uh, you've got your own little thing going on with your brother. Uh, Oliver. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, uh, uh, you know, different <laughs> yeah. in a lot of ways. Um, uh, it's called the Wood Brothers. Yep. Imagine that. And, uh, you know, it's more of a song based kind of thing, singing and uh, kind of blues, rock and roll, folk, Americana kind of thing. And uh, you guys recorded an album a couple of years ago, if I'm not mistaken. We recorded uh, two full-length uh, studio records um, that were on Blue Note, and actually John here, Modesky, produced them. Um, and uh, yeah, and then we had a couple other EPs out. So. Sweet. Um, so, in, in terms of the, the actual sound of music, because uh, you guys look to be the same generation as, as I, uh, growing up in the 70s and 80s, and uh, my musical tastes are pretty much all over the map, uh, alternative rock, uh, we're talking soul, funk, R&B. Uh, is that safe to say that those are some of the genres of music, uh, John, that uh, came to, in yes, terms of your yes, influence? Yeah, for sure. It's yeah. So, you know, what we grew up, you know, what was on the radio, what we grew up listening to, all the music that was happening then. 
But, you know, for me, it's also, you know, I played, grew up playing jazz, a lot of jazz and um, classical music, too. Yeah. It's all in there, really. It, oh, it certainly is, and uh, it's a little bit more deeper than most people. I mean, the grooves are obviously there. Uh, some people have called you Avon Groove. Uh, I guess they, they need to package everything. Human beings are like that. Yeah. Uh, what do you feel about uh, musical tags? Is that well, kind of restraining? Yeah. It's, you know, well, you know, we don't. We just sort of ignore it at this point. It's been we've we've tried. You know, we tried in the early years to to figure out, attach ourselves to whatever we thought we were. You know, maybe oh, maybe we're acid jazz. Uh, no, I guess we're not that. Maybe we're the. You know, we so we just realized that we we've finally decided that we call our music homeless music. <laughs> homeless it is, uh, but you have a home here uh, tonight. That's for sure. Uh, in terms of uh, your approach uh, to, I guess, the recording process versus the live performance, uh, do you prefer uh, the, uh, the live performance, obviously, because that that immediate connection with the uh, the audience? It's different. I think we, you know, we all like. They're both. They're two different ways. You know, there's so many different ways to make music and recording. You know, you, there's a certain. You know, not having an audience allows you to maybe go places you can't go when the audience is there with expectations and the energy of the audience, and then. There's something about that energy that can also lift the music to another place. So it's all really great, it's an, and it's all part of it. But it's just, it is, it is, and can be very different. And we treat it differently, because all of our, you know, all, every show we've ever played is recorded and out there, available on the, you know, so yeah, bootleg. So or that's otherwise. why we don't really, we haven't really put out too many live recordings, and we don't. Um, when we go into the studio, we really approach it differently. You know, we try to, you know, be create, you know, be creative and be us when we uh, create music in the studio. Right, right. Uh, back to Billy, uh, something that uh, is a little dear to me. I used to uh, spin records uh, in nightclubs when I was a little younger. And uh, uh, tell me who uh, Illy B is and how he came about. Illy B's a jerk. I don't know who that person is. <laughs> it's an alias of mine that was created back in the Bob Moses days. And it stuck with me. I, I really like the rhythm of it. So it's... it's, it's uh, Something I use kind of like when I get into the more hip hop style projects, the drum break, uh, uh, break beat stuff, where I collaborate with DJs and uh, with my little record label Amulet Records, I've released some of these DJ oriented, um, uh, you know, records. So I use Illy B as sort of uh, as um, you know, way I guess just a tag to like my hip hop side. Right, right. Uh, I guess one more final question, and uh, that question is uh, is this: uh, when you uh, when you're performing live, is it is, so, is it something that you guys have a set a list already going, or is it organic? It's a combination. Mm -hmm. It's always changing. It's an organic set list. It is. So yeah. Yeah, just it's call flexible. it flexible. Well, sometimes you know, really, like, you know, it really depends on what you know. We we try to set it up so that whatever whatever we do before the the show sets us up to be free and creative within the show you know so sometimes that having the set list gives us something that you know, we don't have to think about during the set we can just you know plow, plow through it and just focus on the energy and and being creative and other times it's really better for us to have to go up there blank and just you know you know let the tunes kind of lead the way so it really depends depends on dinner <laughs> that's chris uh piping in there it does and, and what's on the menu Kinda. for tonight I don't know. We're gonna find out. We're gonna do a lot of stuff from our new record, uh, new records, the Radio Larry in the series. Right. We have three new records that we recorded this year, so we'll be you know pulling a lot of that stuff out. You got samples on the website as well for the for that new yeah. uh, recording. Yeah. Uh, actually, I, uh, another question came to mind. You guys got a music camp. Uh, this is the second annual music camp yeah. that's yeah. taking place. Any uh, any uh, anyone from Canada coming down? You know. Did you check uh, the list. I th last year, I think we had. Yeah, some we had a couple Canadians. people from Canada last um, year. I think we do again. Yeah. We yeah. Do. Uh, where's it taking place this year? Same in place. In the Catskill Mountains, okay. in New York. Yeah, it's, it's not far from here. Yeah, no, it's not. No, it's far five days. Five days. It's five short. Day? I mean, we'd some, you know, someday it'd be nice for it to grow into something bigger. But right now, that's you know about what we can do. So, is that something that'll take place again next year? Is that something you want to continue? Yeah, well, I love it. Yeah, I, I, we're planning I on it. It. Yeah. it was a lot of fun last year. Oh, yeah. yeah, it really is yeah. fun. Well, it is, it's it's great to give back, obviously, and and just uh, try to nurture some great talent. Yeah, that uh, M MW well, Boot Camp. That's right. That's so check it out on the website. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, John Medeski, Billy Martin, Chris Wood, uh, MMW have been my guests. They'll uh, take the stage tonight at 8 p.m. as part of the uh, main stage performance.